Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be customizing this amazing artist resin. I'm quite excited since I don't get to do many resins. Just look at all that detail. He is sculpted by Kitty Cantrell, who is one of my favorite artists, and he is appropriately named Thunderbutt. It was really hard to decide what color to do, but go big or go home, right? So I decided on representing a Noriker with leopard spotting. Norikers are a lovely draft breed that originated in the Austrian Alps. A lot of them have solid coats, but they also come in all kinds of leopard patterns. You may have noticed in these references that they do not have docked tails. So that's right, it's time for the Dremel. I make sure to have glasses, gloves, and a respirator. At first I tried to cut it with the disc, and I knew there would be wire, and this disc is meant for metal, but wow. If you order from Resins by Randy, know that they are not messing around with their wire supports. It's some tough stuff. So I figured if I could sand it down as much as I could that it would be small enough to sculpt around. That should be fine, right? I add a hole so I can slip a wire through. I'm using a strong all-purpose wire for the base of the tail. I want to echo the windswept motion of the mane, so I bend it around until I'm happy with the shape. I set it in place with my Aves two-part epoxy. I want pieces to flow off dramatically, so I'm adding more wire sprouting off. I don't worry about the angle for now, I can bend it once the epoxy hardens. Whoa, okay, what's going on? Did she accidentally delete all the footage? No, I'm just skipping ahead because, spoiler alert, this tail just wasn't doing it for me. I know I wanted a windswept, but the whole shape was weird and the tendrils just looked off to me. More importantly though, I realized it was just sitting too far off his butt and it hadn't been enough to just shave down the original tail. Then I remembered I own a jewelry saw and did what I should have just done from the start and sawed off the wire. I expose more wire by picking off the resin with some pliers and then using my big cutters to cut that off. I make sure to cover it so the wire doesn't go flying across my room. Then I saw off whatever was left. So much wire. Since I can't drill a hole for the new wire, I fold it in half to make an anchor so it can't be pulled out. It'll also give the epoxy a better grip. So now let's get back to sculpting now that I have a fun new shape. It's higher in swishing and really shows off his name. I fill it out with hot glue to bulk the wire, making sure to not go too thick. I add the noodles starting at the tips. I blend them together with 70% rubbing alcohol. To add more depth and some hair texture, I use an X-Acto knife. I keep going up the rest of the way using silicone tools on my fingers to create different heights for the chunks of hair, as well as some texture. I add some pieces that sit out and blow a little bit different, but still flowing with the rest to make it more dynamic. So all this is to say, definitely don't be afraid to just start over if you think something isn't working out. It sucks in the moment, but it's worth it, if nothing else, just to learn something. Mm -hmm. 
Off camera, I sanded and filled any divots. It was a pretty clean cast, so it wasn't too much work. Once he was washed and dried, I can cover him with my Dupacolor Sandable Primer. Then I go back and sand again. I definitely recommend doing this in sunlight to really see all the little areas that need work. Also, if you do it outside, you don't have to clean up. And now we're ready for paint. I'm using Model Air Acrylic thinned down a little bit. I do a few layers to build up the white. Next I mix the brown shade. I do test the color before using it on the model, but it's hard to tell if it will look right until you apply it. In this case it just wasn't rich enough and too yellow, so I added a darker brown and just a touch of red. I just use basic color theory to mix until it looks how I want. This model air set has a lot of yellow toned browns, so I typically have to mix in some red to warm them up. I mix up a darker brown to shade the details.
Lastly, I go over the transition with a touch of gray for a little extra variation. Once it was all dry, I seal it off camera with my Mr. Super Clear Matte Spray. Next, I mix these pink and flesh-toned eyeshadows to shade the areas in the white where there wouldn't be any fur, and you really see the skin. Yes, sometimes I do question what I'm doing with my life. Now we can give this guy his leopard pattern. This is the fun part, where he really starts to come to life. The absolute most important thing to do is look at pictures of real horses and really see their hair patterns, as well as the size of the spots and how they change over different parts of the body. The way leopard jeans work is really fascinating. The spots actually go over the white, over the base coat, instead of poking through white like Pintos. I'm using some black watered down acrylic. I experimented using gray as transition hairs, but I ended up not really liking it. Maybe on a future horse I'll do more pronounced spot rings. I was using a shorter brush, but I switched to this long brush, and I like that a lot more for making round shapes. It's important to remember that the spots will cluster and there's no pattern or symmetry. The more random, the more natural it will look, as long as it flows in the hair direction. Where the hair direction meets, it creates a sharp edge on the bottom of the spots. Once all the spots are on, it's time to add some detail. I go around the spot with a black Prismacolor pencil. Then I go around that with warm gray. Now to really smooth and blend the pencil texture, I use a paper blending stump. I make sure I'm still blending with the direction of the hair grain. I also go in with an eraser pencil to add in a hair effect. It's important to paint the initial spot a little bit smaller than you want the final result, since adding the blending will make the spots bigger. They can really be as big as you want, but if you're doing a portrait model or super big spots, it's important to keep in mind. Now I blend the edges even further with a white colored pencil.
I also take the white up more into the shoulders and add more herring. I do a few more details with the brush, touching up some areas. Now if you thought that was a lot of blending, that was only half. Next I'm going in with the pastels. Really you could skip the pencils, but I think it gives a nice base for this part. I'm using a short angled eyeshadow brush with black pan pastel to blend it out even more. I make sure to seal it with more matte spray so I don't accidentally smudge it. I shade his face with some brown pan pastel and chalk pastel. It will darken when I seal it. Now I can paint the eyes. First I add white to the corners. I did a few layers and then add little pinking for blood vessels. I 
I add a white base to the nostril so the pink will show up better. I can start adding the brown in the eye. I put down a dark circle, then lighter brown while that's still wet so I can blend it. When that's dry, I can fill in the rest with black. I go back in and add little highlights. For the hooves, I start by painting the ones that will be tan with white. I also go up this back leg a little bit to make a marking. I add three coats of this thin beige for the base color. With that done, I can add the white with dry brushing. I take dark brown and repeat the process. I dab off any extra paint and go really lightly so it makes the streaks. I go back with the beige horizontally. I go back and forth until they are sufficiently textured and striped. With a pretty wet brush, I do the white top and blend it down. The bottom of the hooves aren't textured, but I will give the illusion. I sketch out the outlines with colored pencil. With the same paint as the outside of the hoof, I do all the shading. I use dark for the edges and white on the inside, with a little bit of veining on top.
they completely dried, I add Liquitex gloss varnish. This will help them hold up better since they will be touching the ground, as well as to give them some semi-gloss under the matte spray. I paint little hairs back over the hooves. I blend the leg markings the same way as the spots, with the pan pastel. For the little face markings, I use the white pencil. Can't forget those chestnuts. I use a Posca paint pen and do two layers. I add some pink mottled skin around his nose. At the end of the tail, I add some sun bleaching with pan pastel. Don't worry, it will be a lot more faint once I seal it, which I do off camera with my tester spray lacquer. This will give him a nice satin finish to show off all the sculpt's details. I glossed his eyes, nose, and mouth with more Liquitex gloss varnish. And with that, we're all done. Time for the final result. I'm so happy with how he came out, he's just what I pictured. I will definitely have to do more Appaloosa patterns in the future, they are just so fun. I know they look hard, but I definitely recommend trying it out if you've never painted one. And if you have, I hope you've learned something. Thanks for watching! I just wanted to say I'm so blown away by all the nice comments and I'm really glad you're enjoying my videos, I really love making them. So thank you, and make sure to boop that like button and subscribe for more projects!